If you're in Ann Arbor and you say Bo, it means Bo Schembechler. Gruff, loving, disciplined, ethical, softy, passionate, loud, heroic, kind, magnificent. He was a great motivator, great communicator, a friend. I don't think he knew the word defeat. It's a standard of excellence. It's a commitment to something bigger than yourself. Bo was a lover of life. I saw a man that was awesome, wanting to give back. I felt I was Michigan. I just felt I was so much a part of it that nothing would ever change it. When I first heard the name Bo Schembechler, I thought it must have been a disease or something like that. It couldn't possibly have been a human being, Bo Schembechler. But as I understood it, Canham asked several well-known coaches to make a list of their 10 favorite coaches, and Bo was on all the lists. I first met Bo, I think the day he was hired, it was in December of 1968, and some of the players who were going to play for Bo came over to the announcement. And after the press conference was over, I walked up and shook his hand and said, Coach Schembechler, Jim Branstetter, I'm a sophomore on the football team. And he goes, I know who you are. You could lose a little weight, you know that? <laughs> I said, well, hello, Coach. Nice to see you, too. Our first meeting with Bo was unbelievable. He actually let us have it, that we underperformed, didn't have the commitment. And we had no movement on the man over the guard. That we let the coaches down, we let Michigan down, and that uh, it was time for us to step up and represent what we could actually do as a team. None of the players liked him. He was demanding, he was hard, he was unreasonable. This guy was nuts. We all came out of high school and we thought we were pretty successful and we were used to competing at a pretty high level, but he took it up like eight notches. There was constantly an effort to not only prepare you physically, but prepare you mentally for the game of football. He proceeded to make that probably the most difficult spring of any of our lives. We worked harder than any group of people on earth and at the end of the day, you'd just walk into the locker room and you were dragging, you were beat. You didn't think you could take another step. And there's that sign up there, those who stay will be champions. And the reason he put it up was because there was a lot of attrition. Guys were walking off the field in the middle of practice. And that's what Bo wanted to do. He wanted to separate those that wanted to make the sacrifice and the commitment for the team but those who stayed will be champions. That's the point he wanted to make. One day we came in the locker room and one of the guys that had left early and had had enough and quit, put a magic marker underneath it. Those who don't will be doctors, lawyers, and other important people. But then we won a Big Ten championship. And I went, you know, there's a method to his madness. So all of us at that point figured out, you know, maybe the guy's got something. So just button up your chin strap and get ready for it because that's how he does it. As a coach, he had a deep, deep caring. I understand why he got away with his gruffness, his demanding spirit, because he made sure everybody on the team knew he loved them. I'm proud of the way you act. I'm proud of the way you work. I'm proud of the type of people you are. Bo always said that he loved all of the players, not just the All-Americans, not just the guys that went into the NFL, not just the guys who played a lot. He felt Anybody who came through this program and contributed in whatever way you did was special and somebody that he wanted to look after and take care of and pay attention to, and that was certainly the case with me. You have asked me, and I accept. Yes. Yes. To lead the champions of the West. Then you're going in the show. The greatest college fight song ever written. The victors. One, two, three. If you talk with Mo or Carr, they'll tell you how detail-oriented Bo was. He used to carry a yardstick or something, and everybody thought it was to hit people. It was to measure how far apart the linemen were. His 
philosophy was that you built a strong team by having every coach, every player, every person in that football building must have uh, a clear understanding of what the role is. And his belief and his teaching went to the core of teamwork. You got to be a great teacher or you aren't going to be a real, real successful coach. And Bo Schembecker was a great teacher because he could reel people in, he could get close to you. And yet at the same time, he wanted you very disciplined and he wanted you to do it the right way. Perfection, as close as we could get to it, we were working at that. And that's where a lot of the hollering and the screaming and all that stuff came out. Because you put the pressure on the player in practice so in games, it was a little smoother and the player knows, hey, I've been there before. When something did happen, that's when you would see the Schembechler temper. And he made sure that you understood that if you wanted to stay here, you better learn from that mistake. To me, that's what teaching's all about. I can remember one time we were sitting in his office and one of the former players came in and he said, sit down. He sat down on the floor. He didn't introduce me, he didn't talk to him, we just kept right on talking. Finally, he got up and left and I said, what was that all about? He said, the kid lied to me about 10 years ago. First time I've seen him <laughs> So, he didn't want a crossbow. When it was work time, the corners of his mouth went down, he was all business and you better be all business with him and when the corners of his mouth turned up into that impish little grin you knew okay the the bow that we don't get to see very often is coming out but little things like he got knocked over once at practice wide receiver ran him over knocked him ass over tea kettle he was down on the ground and everybody came over to see we thought he might be dead and he gets up and he brushes himself off and he notices everybody looking at him and like real concern on their faces. And he looked around and he goes, what? That would have killed an ordinary human. That was Bo. I felt dull and I couldn't get up for the biggest game I ever coached in my life, which was the Rose Bowl, and I could not figure that out. But I, at, even at that time, I had no thought that there was any possibility I had a heart attack. I think he was very surprised about the heart attack in 69. He was looking forward to the game. Poe was just a natural born fighter. That was very obvious with the way he attacked his physical problems, which obviously were very serious from the first operation after the Rose Bowl. He told me the pain was so great he would just grab a tree and just squeeze it. It hurt him so badly but he would try to fight it off. I met Bo sometime in the early 2000s. He'd had a series of cardiac problems over a long time, beginning when he was 39 years old. When he came to see me for the first time, he said to me that his prior cardiologist had said, there's nothing more we can do for you. And of course, you just don't say that to a coach like Bo Schembechler. He had the saying, what the mind can believe, the body can achieve and he was not able to do the things he wanted to do. And I said, I think you're beginning to believe that you've been defeated. I have to change that. We have to take control of your disease right now. He said, okay, let's go. This is, I found my quarterback, who's gonna lead my medical team. He says, right here, it's Kim Eagle. Bo had the ultimate faith in the cardiovascular center and Dr. Eagle and the team of doctors that he was helping oversee on Bo's behalf. It was always a team effort to take care of Bo. Dr. Eagle's my hero. He has never let us down. Bo was always impressed by Dr. Eagle. Bo had wonderful care, and they always reached out and went out of their way to help him. But Bo was impressed because they did it for everybody. Heart disease was Bo's greatest enemy, but it was also something he dealt with every day something he learned a lot about, something he investigated. And he felt, I have been involved in this for so long. I think there's a way that I can help others. My legacy as a football coach is one thing, but what can I do to prepare others to battle heart disease? And I think that's why the Heart of a Champion Fund to him 
became so important because it was him leaving something after he's gone to make sure that the fight continued. Bo said in his later years when he was making such a commitment to the cardiovascular center, I want to dedicate my life now to health. And so that's where he dedicated his time and energies. And it was focused on cardiovascular disease. The heart of a champion is a $10 million goal to make a difference, create research that's going to help people live longer. Heart disease remains the number one killer of Americans, and that's both men and women. We are doing a good job with cardiovascular disease in the sense that there's less of a burden of cardiovascular disease for individuals. But we're getting older, and heart disease, though it can happen in the young, is more common as people age. With the aging population, more and more people are suffering. The Heart of a Champion Fund is an idea with a purpose to support young investigators, people who are just emerging with extraordinary, bright ideas. This fund has the chance to cure or significantly alter the cardiovascular lives of millions of people. If you take arguably the greatest public university in the country and invest in its very brightest minds thinking about cardiovascular diagnostics, prevention, and cures, we're going to hit some singles, but we're going to hit some home runs. And those home runs will change the landscape of cardiovascular care, not just here, but everywhere. Paul would say, I don't want anyone to suffer the way I have. Let's do something about it. There is something we can do. And there are more cures waiting to be found. The Heart of a Champion Fund is going to find those cures. Every day, Bo touched somebody's life in some way, and he still does. Bo gave so much to the community, to athletics, to the state of Michigan, that a way to honor him would be to contribute to the Heart of the Champion Fund in his memory. Some people have said that when Bo was coaching, Michigan never lost a football game. They just ran out of time. <laughs> and I think Bo really believed that. He figured there was a way to win every game he was in. And I think that's the way he feels about this. I'm not going to lose this. I may not be here, but you know what? My name's going to be involved in something that's going to get this beat, that's going to win this battle. And I think that's why the Art of Champion is quintessential bow, because it's about never giving up. It's about never accepting defeat. It's about finding a way to win. Private philanthropy is essential for doing the best research possible. I think Bo is smiling down there from somewhere, and he's got a goal. And he, he's wagging his finger at us, and he knows we're going to conquer heart disease. There's no question he had the heart of a champion because he led his life that way. This is something he really wanted, and we could pay him back for all those special, special memories. He just wants it to be a team, just like it was in football. The team, the team, the team. And we're all going to do this together. And we need everybody's help. I think Bo would say, here's the deal. We got a problem, we got to solve it. You got it? Huh? Heart disease. We can beat this thing. We got to reach down deep. We got to find a way with the right people, the right players, the right research, the right interest, and people with passion. And we can get this done. By God, we can get this done. But it's up to you. We're only as good as the group. We're only as good as the team. And if we get together and we pull in the same direction, a bunch of us, by God, nothing can beat us. And we'll beat this thing. Just remember that. Don't you ever stop believing we can beat it. This is part of the eulogy uh, I wrote for Bo Schembechler, which came in the form of a letter to God. But please, Lord, consider this request. Let Bo come back to us now and then, not in body, but in heart, in mind. Let us hear the gruff voice once in a while yelling at us to block harder or to tackle lower. Let us feel that big paw around our shoulders when it's cold and we're alone. Let us see that crinkling smile and hear that hearty laugh when we drop into our dreams at night. And let him yell at us now and again when we aren't living up to his standards, because living up to his standards is amongst the finest things we'll ever do. You know, we have a saying in Michigan football, that those who stay will be champions. I can see that you all are champions.